Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm here with news. It was to be expected, of course, because literally we had 24 hours before the Halloween event ended, and if they didn't give us news yesterday, it was going to be today. Even if it's a day, they don't usually do. Anyway, today's video, I'm going to be going over the four units that are going to be in Galadrigalia, talking about them, giving them some of my opinions at the end, and of course, as always, I am going to be summoning on this Galadrigalia. Thankfully, I've got a bunch of tickets saved up, so I'll probably do that. Um... I'll talk a little bit more of that at the end of the video, but before I get into the actual starting of it, remember, if you end up liking the video, leave a like, comment about how you feel about the Gala Dragalia, I'm sure the specific headlining unit, mm, you, is probably going to get rub people really the wrong way, and for good reason, too. <laughs> so let's get into it. The first one we've got is Cat Sith, and also subscribe. Cat Sith. Don't think of Meow as any ordinary ordinary feline, a dragon sworn to Chell who enjoys people watching and midnight walks. Her cute exterior belies mischievous caprice, and she treats untrusted people as playthings. Her callousness and passion match her packed bound human. Elegant artifice deals shadow damage to enemies directly ahead for 10 seconds, and her abilities are Shadow Skillful Trickery 2. If the user is attuned to shadow, increase the damage dealt by the user's next 15 skills by 180% at the start of quest. Every 25 hit combo will increase the damage dealt by an additional skill by 180%. A maximum of 15 of this skill damage increase effect can be stored for use, and any excess will be discarded. If the user is also ending shape shift equals uh, skillful trickery too. If the user is attuned to shadow, increases the damage dealt by the user's next eight skills by 180% when the user's shape shift is undone. Um, regarding their basic attacks, while well, shape shift Gallus uh, Sif's um, standard attack deals damage. Kate Sif's, um, I call it Cat Sif. Uh, standard attacks deal damage to the enemies in the area and inflict sleep. And regarding buff count, if the buff applied to Gala Cat Sith, um, Skillful Trickery 1 2 ability has stacked, it will count as a single buff for skills that are altered by the number of buffs affected by the user. Okay. Uh, this is really damn good. I also like that she's different from Mars, because that was actually my one fear, is that for some reason, like, you know how most dragons are, like, we have skill dragons of all the shadow units. I was really expecting, um, the next Galadragalia just to be Mars again, but I'm really glad they're not going in that direction. It really makes a lot of the, um, Galadragalia dragons feel unique when they don't share the exact same skills. Uh, that's the one positive. Here's a huge negative. Shadow didn't need this damn dragon. Literally, everyone, <coughs> a lot of people, not on standard, but on expert, are having some real tough-ass trouble with uh, water content. And we have three water units in here. Let's ignore that for right now. This dragon being Shadow is maybe the dumbest thing they could probably release. Because currently, the way the meta is, is that it's Shadow. Shadow beats everything. Like, here's the secret truth. A lot of people just beat everything with Shadow. Because um, you can beat everything with Shadow. Shadow has no weakness to the point where I really wish they had actually gone back and said, like, actually, Shadow can take damage from everything equal to how much or something. Like, something about Shadow needs to change, because obviously... And light, but light isn't the same way because light is currently not as good as shadow. Nowhere near as good as shadow. Um, shadow runs a rough shot, and something needs to be done with shadow. And the last thing shadow needs is another damn dragon, because they already run rough shot over everything. Their freaking Agito that they already got, already a thing of the past, because they can beat it so easy. Unless this, um, the master version of um, Cayenne, I think is how you pronounce it, of Cayenne is like something that most shadow units can't beat which if that is something that they plan on making that sounds one insane and two not possible because shadow is just so incredibly powerful unless they did something that's like all shadow units start at one hp but even then that wouldn't matter because they have no actually it would kind of affect grace i don't know this this cat is really good i don't think she goes with every shadow unit in the game we're gonna have to wait to see calculations on that um like, the fact that she only has 15 skill things, it makes me wonder how certain units like, uh... Like Alex. Like, Alex will probably get through these a whole bunch, and then you have to remember the dragon, so you have to kind of keep track of it. But also, at the same time, I think... I think she would just be dead. Like, I don't know, once you get all this buff in, especially with the 25 counter count, um... 
Bayern, yeah, this right here makes it seem like, so, yeah, I don't know, this seems just crazy, because 180%, over 180% when, when it's a 25 hit combo, it's going to be crazy. The damage dealt to the skill is just going to be insane. Like, Ali Alex is already kind of insane, this probably pushes her way over the top, but I don't know. I don't know, we'll have to see. I'll wait for calculations, but there's one thing you're really sure, this... This dragon is good. It's damn good. It's the reason I'm summoning. It's because I want this dragon. Now, with my thoughts of Shadow of the, away from the side, and I do realize I'm kind of contributing to the problem because I said I'm going to be summoning for it, but that was the same way I felt about Mars. Like, Mars really helped out everyone in fire. I don't know if Catsip will do that for Shadow, but she'll definitely, like... I don't know. We'll see. We'll wait and see. Alright, let's move on to the next unit. Sticks. The Dragon Guardian of the South uh, something Rivers, I can't pronounce that, with more various between immature and mature forms, a normally friendly dragon witnessed the humans breaking a certain taboo, causing it to produce troublesome copies of itself. Uh, Frigid Blast deals water damage to enemies in a line. Damage will increase based on the number of Ice Spirit stacks the user has. Ice Spirit stacks are gained through Styx's normal attacks and can stack up to three times. All spirit stacks will be consumed when the user uses a skill and when the shapeshift is undone. Um, and then her the abilities is the if the user is attuned to water, increase the damage of the next attack skill by 50% for every 15 seconds that pass. This buff can stack up to four times. All stacks will be lost upon using an attack skill. Um, I think this dragon is specifically made only for the two new units because I'm trying to think of the no so the I guess the best way to get out of this unit is basically waiting a full minute to get that 200% boost and like kind of similar to like what Krom does where you just basically save up for a nuke. So someone who already saves up for a nuke, um, it makes their nuke super strong in theory enough to like kill I guess in one hit. Uh, the problem is that this specific dragon wouldn't work with, well with Krom at all just because like Krom relies on its on his skill one to kind of get that going. So you need a unit that's literally charges up with a skill that does not deal any damage. It has to be not be an attack skill. And from what I've read, the next two units have that, but I don't know. Seems okay. Seems kind of weird that the dragon only works for those two people at this moment, but we'll see as more water units. This is kind of, kind of one of the ones where I'm like, it's kind of interesting. I don't know if any actual water units can help in any way with this. But all right, let's move on. Okay. We got Eugene, aka Deku. Uh, a dower. I was really laughing at his quote. I'm not much. A dower, contrary young man who talks a big game and is his insistence he doesn't need friends, but this stems from his loneliness. In reality, he's a ball of nerves who doesn't want to talk, and yet, in reality, he yearns to change. Signature tactics, create a buff zone that lasts for 10 seconds and activates skill shift. Phase 1, grassland warrior advance, increase the strength of adventures inside the buff zone by 20%. Phase 2, cell sword assault, increase the strength of adventures inside the buff zone for 20%, increases their flame resistance by 8%. And phase 3, increases the strength of adventures inside the buff zone by 20%, increases their flame resistance by 8%. Adds 20% of the modifiers applied to their critical damage, grants the user check effect, and if it immediately ready as a checkmate skill for use. Checkmate skill can only be used when the user has check effect, and the check effect can be stored up to a maximum of two times. Uh, checkmate deals water damage to the enemies directly ahead. The skill can only be used when the user has the check effect and usable. Wait, what? Why is this shareable? If it literally says in the effect, it can only be used if it's under a check effect. That doesn't make any sense to me. Whatever. Dragon haste 15%. Um. Chain Claw ability, Dragon Claw. Ooh, that's really good. Um, abilities, critical hit equals inspirational level up to. Increases the user inspiration level by one stage each time one of the user's attacks is a critical hit. After activating this ability, it will not activate again for 10 seconds. Some resistance 100%. HP 70% equals defense 13%. Um, yeah, he seems literally built to, one, be a supporter, and then also to kind of run with sticks, but at the same time... <laughs> his skill seems kind of be best to go with the bunny as opposed to him. We'll have to see how fast he gets this up because the make or break it for this one is what's the cost of it? Because if it doesn't cost much, then it's not going to be really a problem. Uh, if you want to take an example of 
a move having high cost being kind of a killer. You look at Halloween Ellie's uh, Mana Spiral, which that was a big problem, is that it costs too much to get everything done, and it's really slow compared to the way it was. But then you have pre that, and it's a pretty quick thing, and you can spam it and stuff. And also, he's a sword. Actually, you could get this pretty fast, I think. I don't know. He's interesting. I don't know if he's what water needed, because the boss requires to be hit by affliction. The Agito boss requires to be hit by affliction, and he does not do that. So, great. All right, let's move on to the next. And of course, even if that, the Chiz Chain Co-op ability is pretty good. The, the Dragon Claws um, 6. Catherine, did you ask the glimpse of these perfect curls? The daughter of the mayor of the rural town of Quinville, her domineering attitude tends to drag people into her affairs, but she's actually quite stoic. Despite her pampered origin, she strives every day to be the perfect version of herself. Back in call increases the user's strength by 20% for 10 seconds and grants the users the perfect escort effect. The perfection embodied ability buffs the users based on the number of perfect escort stacks they have, a maximum of 3 stacks. Perfect order deals water damage to the target and nearby enemies. Damage will be increased based on the number of perfect escort stacks the user has. Using this skill will consume all perfect escort stacks. HP 15%, chain co ability, water above 10 hits, strength 13%. Um, perfection embodied 2. Excuse me, I just ate pizza. Uh, <laughs> above the user standard attacks, four strikes, and perfect order skill based on the number of perfect escort stacks. To have in addition, they will be immune to knockback and all elemental attuned damage to take will be reduced by 10% as long as they have at least one stack, but they will lose one stack each time they take damage. What? Stun resistance 100%, skill damage 30%. I don't know about that last part. I was about to say, like, um, <laughs> the new Agito, it's actually very hard not to get hit just because there's a move that is like a wide AoE. There is a way to dodge it, but you'd have to be pretty good, I guess, at it. Um, same problem as the last guy, she doesn't really have, she doesn't really have um, anything that inflicts. So while she has is insane damage, and this is kind of the problem like, um, which was a problem with Marth, because we didn't know how much damage he would do with his skill too, until we actually got, um, the damage mods on it. And it turned out he did deal a whole buttload of damage. The problem was is that it kind of wasn't worth it. Um, at least in most people's opinion, at least. I wasn't the biggest fan of him, but I definitely remember seeing a lot of Chrome defenders. Which, to be fair, they love the character. I'm not going to come at you if you love the character regardless. But, ah, uh, yeah, both of these kind of being like him, but being like two different kind of like versions of it is interesting. I don't know how they're going to pan out because I kind of need damage mods. Without damage mods, this is basically useless because I can't really tell how much damage she's going to be doing. Stun resistance is pretty good because um, the Agito does both stun and burn and I think he also has stun. So yeah, you just got to remember the stand in the stun cir version of the circle. But yeah, that's the all the units coming up. Um, I would definitely like to have uh, Catherine right here. I would be okay with Deku. I would be okay with sticks. This is the big one right here. I will be doing a summon video because I like the summon on Galadrigalia. I'm not probably not gonna go crazy. Thankfully I did have, because of all the recent events and I didn't need the summon on summer. Let me go here. I didn't need the summon on summer. I didn't need the summon on Halloween. So I have a decent amount of this. I got five multi tickets, 50 of these. So I can throw a couple of those out there. Uh, probably not go too crazy. Just because, like, Galadrigalia is now every month. You gotta pick your, pick and choose your battles. Do I want a very powerful Shadow Dragon? Yes. Will I lose sleep if I get don't get them? No, not really. Shadow's already good. Shinobi's perfectly fine. Unless you care about, like, super crazy overpowered and you're, like, one of those dudes that's like, oh, yeah, we beat the Agito in 30 seconds. That's all I care about. Then I'm like, all right, go for it. That's not really what I care about. <laughs> I care about mostly about characters that I want, and Cat Sith is not as cool as Mars, in my opinion, but I will gladly go after them. And that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. Again, the obvious prize here is Cat Sith. Um, the others, I need to wait and see. I need to see how the how much mods they're doing on their attack skills, how they're doing, whether or not they actually do need this dragon. Uh, it's a lot of waiting. At least I think there's a lot of waiting. Some people already probably already made up their minds, but whatever. All right, that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. Enjoy your Sunday, and I'll see you guys for the summon banner, which should be the next video you see. So have a good night, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.